Welcome to another edition of the Seat Shop installation video series. In this episode, we're going to be showing you how to replace a leather driver bottom seat cover on any 2000 through 2002 Chevy or GMC Tahoe, Suburban, Yukon, Yukon XL, the pickup trucks, and the Cadillac Escalades. Now, what we do here at the Seat Shop is we manufacture leather replacement seat covers that match with the OEM interior. This way you can just replace whatever piece is wearing out in your vehicle, whether it be a bottom, a top, an armrest, or a headrest. Now Brian's going to show you some of the tools here we're going to use. All right, perfect. We've already pulled the seat out of the truck. Uh, you'll need two uh, different sockets to pull that out. You'll need an 11 millimeter and a 15 millimeter. The front two are the, large, are the 15, the back two will be the 11. When you see the bolts on the floor, they're going to have a funky little star shape to it, six-pointed star. Uh, which, you know, the regular, but a regular metric uh, socket will fit on there. Make sure they're the deep socket, especially for the front, you'll need the deep sockets to get in there to it. And sometimes it helps to have a little magnet with you. If you don't have to have one, but if you got one, it's easy to get the, the uh, nut up out of the hole there um, when, uh, when you're pulling the, the seat out. Uh, underneath the seat, there's going to be two power connections. The quick connect, those will undo so you can pull the seat out of the truck. Now we've got a regular socket, like I said, 11 and the 13. You also need an 18 mil, a 13. On the side panel where the control panel is screwed on, it can be two different ways. It can either be with a regular Phillips screws or it could be a Torx bit. Uh, if it's a Torx, it'll be the T15 will be your size for that. You'll know once you look at your side panel, there's four screws that hold it on. We've got a couple flathead screwdrivers, a uh, Phillips head, a pair of scissors, and we got a pry tool. Pry tool, you don't have to have this, but it makes it a lot easier on some of the steps. You can use a flathead if you don't have a pry tool, but if you got one, pull it out. It's, it's good to use. We'll go ahead and start pulling the side panel off here. There we go. And before you, you pull the seat out of the truck or before you disconnect the power, make sure that you raise the seat bottom pan here all the way up on uh, the front and the back, as well as get the seat adjusted in the middle position, you know, in, in the forward to back. Um, we'll start pulling this electric control panel here. Now this happens to be an electric seat. Some of the vehicles um, have a manual lumbar knob. This has the electric uh, lumbar. If you have the manual lumbar knob, um, right after we pull this, we'll show you how, how to pull that manual lumbar knob and get this side panel off. Take these, there's four Phillips head screws here. We're gonna take those out. Loosen them, pull this side panel out. You see that little flat head? And there's two electrical connections. One's going to be at the front here, one's going to be at the back for the lumbar. On the back one, it just has a little plastic flap on the bottom. If you just get some separation with the flathead, um, pull that out. And the front one has a little button um, on the front right here, just behind this plastic um, trim panel. So just push that button, pull it out like that. And here's how to do it if you have the manual lumbar. Now if you've got the manual lumbar in your seat, you're going to see this knob right here on the side of your seat. Um, we've already removed the, the three other screws that we could get to, but there's one behind that knob. Um, so we're going to have to remove this in order to get to that last screw. Um, the best way to do this, because you'll have to get under here to the cable, is go ahead and remove the two 13 millimeter nuts at the top of the seat pan so you can get some separation you'll have some extra room to work in there. And underneath the seat here, you'll see this cable right here that's, that's going into the seat top. Um, you'll want to make sure that the lumbar knob is all the way in the relaxed position so you can see the chrome ball here at the end of, um, at the, end of the cable. And this is a quick connect, so what you're going to do is just get your fingers behind there and pull out um, to towards you. It'll unhook that cable, and then this ball will feed out of that, uh, that hole in there. Um, we'll show you in a second. After that cable's undone, You'll be able to just grab this knob and pull it straight out. This whole mechanism, everything will come right out. Um, and there's a certain way it goes in, too, when you're putting it back in. Uh, you'll see this ball right here. Uh, that will have to face you, and you'll push it in, because there's two little tabs here that need to line up with grooves in there. Um, we'll show you that in a second. All right, get to that last screw. All right. Now the control panel for the manual uh, manual seats a little bit different than the uh, the, the full power one. It, mainly where you get to the the little quick connect to, un, to undo the wire from it. They kind of put it flipped upside down backwards. It's hard to get to. A lot of times we'll take a little 90 degree pick like Hunter's got here, and he'll show you how you got to go from the back side of it to to be able to press the uh, 
the little tabs so that'll release the clip. Yeah, it's the clip is literally about a quarter of an inch away from this back plastic panel. So I'm just gonna get in there straight with a, um, or actually with a 90 degree pick sideways. Then I can kind of rotate it down so it presses that button um, and then pop it out. It's it's really hard to do otherwise. If you can't get it with a, with a pick like that, there's uh, like three or four screws that to hold the whole switch pack onto the to the, the plastic panel. You can unscrew. Uh, but usually we always try to hit this first with the pick, try to get it from the back side to see if we can get that there undone. Uh, sometimes you just can't get to the dang thing and it won't, it won't come off and we'll unscrew it. But uh, try this first. It's usually easier than having to unscrew the whole thing and put it screwed all back together. Yeah, you'll see that clip right there is what you're going to have to do is press this down in order to release. So I'll get the pick in here like that in between the panel um, sideways and then I'll kind of push it down like that um, using the back panel as leverage. Pop that out and then pull it. Um, when you're getting a, this control panel back on and hooking up the cable, um, get that snapped on, line it up. This is obviously after you've made your cut in the new cover. Uh, let's see where it uh, There we go. Take that knob again, keeping in mind that that hole for the, um, the ball at the end of the cable needs to be facing towards you. These two grooves or the two tabs will line up. That should slide in. You'll hear it snap. Um, it's not very loud. If, if you don't hear it snap, it's no big deal. It's just make sure it's all the way in. Take the end of this cable. Push it straight push, in. Push the ball straight in, and then you'll pull it to the side like this to get it lined back up. And then... Just push it with some pressure and it'll feed back, back in, snap in place. Get your three screws back on the side here and you'll be good to go. All right, now that we got that electrical panel off, um, we're going to go ahead and get this plastic piece or this trim piece off of the bottom of the seat. You'll have to do this in the 2000 and 2002s because the seat belt here, you'll see this, this is a cut seat belt, um, but you can see how it's fed right here from, from down through the cover. And then there's an 18 millimeter bolt behind here, so we're going to have to take this trim panel off. Um, again, those are just four Phillips head screws. Also, usually a uh, lever. No, that's that's only on the manual. Sorry, I was thinking about the yeah on the manual though. Yeah, on the manual, there's going to be a uh, little handle you have to unscrew with a Phillips set for right your, to lean the seat back. I thought on the manual also. Um, and the 18. 18. Yeah. And so here's that here's a nut right here that holding that the bottom of the seat belt onto the frame. Um, get it 18. Pull that off and you. Pull it off like that and then feed the seat belt up through the cover um, and this will just hang right there. <coughs> All right, let's turn this pull it back. All right, there we go. 13 millimeter. That's just, that's 15. <coughs> There's two 13 millimeter nuts up here um, that are holding on the top of the seat pan that you'll have to take off. On the bottom of it here, th there's no bolt or nut or anything. It's a plastic tab with a, with a groove in it. Those feed and lock down into grooves, um, grooves cut in the metal seat frame. Um, see if we can get a close up on there. <coughs> so we'll pull these 13s. So when you're putting it back on, obviously you'll set the back two in the, in the channels and push all the way down. Then the front ones, you can they'll, they'll put the screws to come back through the, the holes in the frame. But you'll set all the right. rear, rear tabs first. All right, now that those two are off, we're going to get a couple flatheads and start on doing all the electrical connections. Now every seat can be different. Um, a, a different style clip, a different number of clips, just depending on the power options in the year it was built. Um, but obviously the bottom goal is to get all the electrical connections disconnected so we can get this seat pan removed from the seat frame. Um, so I'm just going to start finding all these. There'll be a bunch, a lot of the bigger ones will be kind of in the center. You'll have some smaller yep. ones that kind of come back where your seat belt is. There'll be uh, two little small ones, a green one. If you have the heated seats, you'll see the little green connection. That's your seat heater connection. And then be another little black connector over here. But so you'll see the main ones will be kind of in the center of the bigger ones, and you'll have a couple little here. ones around here 
Uh, you'll know if one's still connected when you try to pull the paint off. If it's still, you know, held on, you'll be able to find it. But uh, there's a couple of them hidden down this side channel here, too. Yep, there's one coming over here to the middle. And some of those help to have a little flathead screwdriver to, to pry the little yep. top up to for the quick neck to pull them there apart. There we go. Um, the little seat heater ones on the side. A lot of people ask us about the airbags, if you have the air side airbags and stuff on the vehicle, if, it's, if there's any problem with, you know, unhooking the seat from the truck and, and undoing these plugs and everything. Uh, we've never had any issue with, it, with the airbag. The only way the airbag is going to deploy is if an electrical charge is touched to the wires. Uh, but simply disconnecting it or taking it out of the vehicle, uh, some people think they need to pull the, the, undo the battery cables from the vehicle before they do it. You, know, you don't need to do anything like that. The only way that airbag is going to go off is if you touch an electrical, electrical charge to it. But uh, so you shouldn't have any issue at all with that. All right, we should all be free here. Take that. There we go. See. And if you have to get the seat off the workbench, um, you know, to work on the bottom cover, don't grab the seat. I'll show you right here. This is a motor that runs the two that moves the seat forward and back. Right here. Don't grab it by this plastic piece because it it can crack. Um, we've had customers crack them before, and it, it was an $800 part from GM. Uh, so I just grabbed this frame rail here. Sometimes I'll get a rag and basically lift that up. Okay. All right, now that we get the bottom separated from the top, we're going to start taking the old cover off, and then we'll get, once we get that off, we'll start walking through how to reinstall it. There's a series of plastic clips that are all the way around at the sides and the back, and this whole big rim here is one big plastic clip as well. So we'll start taking the, the easy ones off in the back here. Get you a, definitely do this with a flathead. The, the inside rim of these seats can be razor sharp, and you'll really cut your hands up if you try to do it with your fingers. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> I've been cut up pretty bad from these things before. So uh, use a screwdriver or flathead screwdriver or a pry tool or something because there's, there's some, a lot of sharp edges around here. And once those are done, you're gonna peel this let this whole clip around. Now this one will peel back. In reverse, kind of like your you know throttle on a motorcycle. So you can feel your little plastic rim underneath here, and kind of roll it back, and it'll snap off. Be real careful on these two. There's these little ridges around here. Those are really sharp. That's what actually really clasp onto the to the plastic clip that goes around there. That really what secures it on there. So now that that's free, we're going to start peeling it back in one corner. I'll usually start with this front corner and pull it back here. You don't want to rip the whole thing off first. You want to start getting all the corners undone and kind of turn it inside out like that. So then we get that corner, pull that off and on the back. Okay, now that that's up, this cover is actually attached to the foam with Velcro. So there's going to be Velcro channels around here. So when you pull it up, you want to do it kind of real slow. You do it an inch at a time. You want to push down on the Velcro that's on the foam to separate because if you just yank it up sometimes you can rip the, the Velcro off of the foam. It's not the end of the world but uh, you'll have to glue it back on so stuff. I'll get to that here in a second but uh, just be real careful when you're pulling it off the first time that way you don't have to spend the extra time resetting the Velcro back on there. So that's done. We'll get that pulled apart and set it aside. Before we get to recovering I want to address the f these foam cushions. A lot of times the, the reason your seat cover, the leather's worn out, is because the foam cushion's been breaking down. Where you slide out of the truck all the time, that left pane will just get smashed down and that loses its density there. This one's actually in pretty decent shape. You can feel that right here, this is the main spot you slide out. It's, it's definitely pushed down some. It's, it, you can feel it's kind of hauled out on the inside. You can really get a good test on how bad yours is based on the, other, the side closest to your console. If you were to push down there, you can feel how, the, how it pushes back the density on there, then push back on the, push down this left side. You can feel a, a big difference. If your foam's completely blown out or there's a real pancake down here, when you put the new cover on there, the new cover is not going to have the support of the foam like it's supposed to have, and it's going to cause it to, to wear out a whole lot faster than it's designed to. The foam makes a, a big difference. We carry the foam. Uh, we've got it on our website. You can call us when, you, uh, when you're ordering it. Just tell us over the phone. We can get you a new cushion for it, but it makes a, an enormous difference on not only the comfort, but how the new cover is going to last. So check on the foam. That's a big part. That's the main reason why your leather cover actually wears out. 
Uh, another thing you can do is steam the foam. If it's in pretty decent shape, kind of like this one is, it's not too bad here. You can take a regular steamer, household steamer for, you know, for garments and clothes and stuff. You can actually go around and steam all the edges up and you'll really see it to puff up. We got a video to show you how, how that works as well. You'll really see the foam kind of blow back up when you hit it with a foam. If you got a new seat, if you get a new leather, a new uh, foam cushion and you had the heated seats, the heated pad here can transfer over to the new, uh, the new foam cushion. This is basically just glued on the front and on the back from the factory so it'll peel up. This little cover, this whole thing will just peel off on the back and then it'll roll up. So this whole thing just comes off so you can transfer it over to the new cushion. And so you'll get some glue, some uh, 3M makes a spray adhesive. You can spray a little strip across the back and the front and reapply the heater to the new cushion. Now I'm going to get the cover and we're going to go ahead and install that here. All right, one last quick note before we put the new cover on. This is a, a new foam cushion. This is the, uh, the old foam. You can really see comparison on you know, how much more flattened down this one is versus the, the brand new one. Um, it definitely makes a huge difference. It's not necessary in all applications, but most of the time, especially from a 2000 to 02 model, changes are you probably gonna have 120 to 180,000 miles on the truck as you're planning on keeping it. Man, it makes a huge difference to get a new foam cushion. You can just see how much more puffed up and full this one is and dense versus uh, one that's, that's used. Now, the f I get a lot of questions on if when people do replace the foam cushion, how it installs onto the frame. It's extremely simple. The, what, basically what holds the, uh, the foam onto the frame is actually the seat cover. That's all there is to it. It just pops right on. So the underneath side is molded exactly to the frame and it just pops straight on. So oh, here's the new one. It'll just hook right onto the frame. That's all there is to it. Then you put the leather cover on there that wraps around the clips onto the frame that holds it on tight. Now if you get a new cushion, these, it comes with just one little channel cut here. This is for the most base model truck that just has a lumbar control, no, no power no, or anything. You can all see this, see this other little rim here that's, that's, that's etched in there. Uh, if you have the full power or you know something other than the base model work truck that just has one little knob here, you'll have to actually take some scissors and cut that panel out along that line here so that you got this type of hole on the side for the control panel to go back in. So you may have to make that trim cut on the foam if you are replacing it. So move that out of the way. Hook this back on. Okay, now recover it. You can take your new cover. I always turn around so it's facing me. Because we're you got Velcro on underneath on this side of the cover here. That's gonna match up with all the Velcro on here. So I'll Hold this back, and I'll, there's a little groove down the middle of the foam here too. You can match your seam up, so you know you're in the middle. Line that up all the way up to the, and go ahead and Velcro the front rim down there. And you want to do these side wings here. Now I'm I'm actually pulling pulling it tight when I'm doing it, stretching it out. So. With my thumb, I'm pushing down on it on the inside, and I'm pulling underneath to get it stretched. Oh, look at that. So that, that's all set. Now we'll go down the sides here. A lot of times before I get the Velcro, I'll grab here, and I'll tug it a little bit, kind of get stretched out a little bit. And then go down, set your Velcro. Get that pushed in real good. Do the same thing on this side. Now that's all hooked. Now we'll go ahead and roll the cover on. So I'll start in one of the front corners, either front, right, or left, doesn't matter each way. I'll put my fingers along the seam, the double seam around the corner, and I'm going to push out with my hand and push in on the foam here. So I'm going to get this lane tight, grab the foam, and push in. You want to roll over with your hand, roll over like that, and pull it down. That's tight. Now you can do the same thing over here. Now you see all these creases here, this because the cover needs to push this way. So when you're lining this one up, you just stretch it, get it over the corner, and really roll your hand over. Okay. Now turn the cover. Now this is going to get pretty tight on some points. You'll see where some seams come together here, here, and these back pieces here where they sew together. 
If it's really tight, you may want to get another pair of hands, someone pulling, holding that joint together while you roll it over. If it's looking real tight, don't just force it on because you could tear it. That's rolled over. There's another little st strap because the, where the seat belt comes through the frame, there's a little pocket in the back of the cover. There's a little, another little piece of vinyl that's got a little uh, clip on the end of it. You want to dig that little guy out. I'll show you where he is here. Okay, this little, this little strap is going to go through the pocket on the cover. The main thing is you got to make sure it goes through the, there's a slot on the foam that it needs to go through. So make sure it feeds down through the slot in the foam. I'll show you how that hooks on here and we'll get this thing flipped over. Okay, now, before you put all the clips on, wipe off the surface you're working on. Make sure there's no sharp edges or anything on there that can scratch up the new cover. I've done that before, <laughs> flip it over and there's something sharp, you finish the install and it's got a nice cut in the middle of the cover. So flip this plastic rim all the way around. It's kind of a funky way how this thing hooks on. It rolls over and clips on. It kind of looks like it would be backwards when you got it, but it's just kind of a funky way that it installs. So you got it this way, it's going to pull up over the channel, it's going to roll over and clip on. So we're going to be careful this, this edge is sharp. You pull this over. We're going to make sure it get, lines up in that channel. If you get it too far forward, it's not going to hook in that channel. So you got to get it, line up there, and roll it over. And then kind of wiggle it back and forth. And you'll feel it clip when you push down. There, you, you, some, you may even be able to hear that snap. Once you got that on, so sometimes this can be one of the hardest parts is getting that going. If it's really tough and you can't get it to roll over, if you got another person that can help you, they can push down on the frame here to compress it. It'll compress the foam and it gives you some more slack on this piece so you can, we can really roll it over easier and push it down so it locks into that slot. If you don't, if it doesn't get locked in, it'll just keep coming unpopped underneath, keep coming unraveled on you. Once that front's on, you, want to, you always want to start with the front. You don't want to start in the corner, otherwise it's going to get crooked. When you start one side and go all the way to the other, it's going to get, it can get off. Now we're going to do each front corner now that the front's on. This part's one of the tricky ones too because it always goes on the inside of this metal piece here. So when I pull this over, there it is right there. So a lot of times when you first put it on, the plastic's on the inside of it. You want to have it over it and you want to really get to where you can make sure that it's getting on that trough and the hard part is getting this thing to flip. Once you get to flip, and then that clips. And the next part you want to start, you want to make sure it hooks on this spot here too. Make sure that gets in the trough of that clip too. And once that's on, there we go. Because if these pieces don't get clipped, it'll start, it'll pop loose and, it'll, and it'll, once it starts, it just runs all the way down the side and keeps on doing. Okay, this piece here, pull it over, flip it, okay. Sometimes it really helps just take your palm and push down on it. Make sure it's clipped in good. But that's all snapped on. Now, here's that little flap that we fed through the side. And there's a little slit in the cover right here that this will go through. Once it comes through here, then it's going to pull through. It's going to clip into there. I'll get you a flathead. Snap that right in there. And this will fold over here and hook onto the frame. Same thing will happen over here. Snap that in place. Fold this under. Slide it up into place there. Okay. Those are all on. Let's get the back clip. You always want this little tail to come out towards the passenger side of the seat, towards the passenger needs to go on this side. That's where the 
hookups are going to go. So got this side. And that's the side opposite of your control panel. So the part closest to the console, that's just the way the tail needs to come out on that. So now that's on. We're all installed there. Perfect. Now we're going to grab the frame. We're going to go ahead and put this back on. We'll show you how to get all the connections done and, and finish up the install. Now if you're just replacing the bottom, you're going to want to make sure to clean the top to ensure the perfect match. For that, check out our cleaning video on our install videos page and on our website. Um, after you clean it, you're definitely going to want to come back over it with a good leather conditioner. We offer two different types. There's a Lexol brand we carry, um, has a cleaner conditioner kit, and as well as uh, the Mother's brand, the Reflections line, which is really good stuff too. Um, all right, we got this. Let's see that bottom. All right, we're just going to take the bottom seat pan here, uh, feed all the wires back through how they were, get the down here, get these two bottom pegs fit on there. Actually, that's right here. Those bottom pegs will go through the hole, and then they'll you can push them down through that groove that's cut to get these top two threaded bolts aligned. There we go. Get the 13 millimeter nuts. Now when you're hooking all the, the power connections back up, uh, none of the connections are, are interchangeable with each other. There's nothing so you can't plug anything to the wrong to the wrong plug. They're all the same. So don't, don't worry about that when you're uh, when you're putting the plugs back together. They're pretty straightforward and they're, they're gonna be the exact length to where they need to hook up with each other. There you go. We'll do all these connections here. If you happen to forget a connection underneath, which uh, happens from time to time, we've definitely done that a number of times. The first, when you put, uh, get the seat back in the truck and get it all plugged back in, the first thing you notice when you start the truck up and you know drive 100 yards or so, the uh, airbag light is going to light up on your uh, speedometer. So when you see that light up on the dash, uh, that just means you've, you've missed a connection underneath. And it can have something that doesn't have anything to do with an airbag at all. Uh, but if any uh, electrical connection is loose or, or disconnected underneath the seat, either the driver or passenger side, either way, it'll still throw the, uh, the sensor will light up on your dashboard. So there's nothing wrong with your airbag. It just means you missed a clip underneath. Uh, just uh, you know, un unbolt the seat and rock it back and look underneath and see uh, if you mi where you missed a connection. One more little black one for the. There we go. All right, that should be it for the electrical. Okay. Turn the seat back up. When you get here, you'll have you'll have your seat belt that's hanging here like this, um, and remember it goes through the the hole in the cover. So you just pull it down, feed it through that hole. And you can reach up underneath the cover. When you feel it, you pull it down like that. <clears throat> Hook it on that threaded bolt right there. Take the 18 millimeter nut. You get that. Tighten that back down good. All right, and plastic panel on the side. It's kind of tricky. Um, that's why that's why you really want to remember to raise the seat all the way up in the vehicle um, before you disconnect it. Just gets you some extra room under here because this thing kind of snakes in there. And if it's down all the way, you can forget about it. There's no way you can get it uh, on or off. There we go. Line up with those holes. Got these four Phillips screws. Now, all of our covers come without the power control panel cut in the side. We don't pre-cut the hole for that. That's all done at the time of install. Uh, that'll be the next step once Hunter gets that side plate back on. Um, this one has, the, from 2002, there's going to be a small hole cut on the side, as you see here, because there's a seam that runs down the side of the seat. And if there wasn't a hole there, then you'd have to be cutting across the seam. Once you cut across that, it start going to start coming unraveled and unstitched. So uh, that, that hole's cut there, so you have a place to start cutting from, so you don't have to cut across the stitch. Um, so that little hole there is, uh, is made for, to be cut out for any type of power options, whether it be the very base model or the, the full eight-way power like this one is here.
We had quite a few questions on that. People think they got the wrong cover, color because or cover because the, there wasn't any holes cut on the side. That's definitely something to do right at the time of, of install. So, yep. And while we always hold this up kind of as a pattern, um, just to just to kind of see generically where you're going. Um, you definitely don't want to cut the whole size of this. Uh, we'll start really really small. Like Brian said, don't don't cut through that double seam. So we're just gonna. I'm going to start real small and start trimming up to the front because once you get a once you get a little bit of cut out, um, you can when you hold this panel up, you can see where the screws need to go, the screw holes. So you definitely don't want to go bigger than that, um, a lot smaller because this vinyl on the side will actually stretch um, and it'll give you some more room. And on the back side of the uh, control panel, you see these these gray pegs. Uh, some of these pegs will go through an actual little hole, little metal hole on the inside of the frame. Uh, especially the one towards the rear. This one definitely goes through a hole that's drilled in it. So you can see where the hole is and you can line that up and visually because the bracket will be underneath here and you'll see where the holes are. So you can, you'll know if you're lining it too far forward or back so you can get a good visual where you can really, where you can trim out some more of the vinyl. Yep, and um, I'll, I'll make one line um, across the center of it, across the center of this opening in the, in the seat frame you can see there. I can just push my fingers in and see it. I'll make a line across the center, um, being careful not to go too far back at first. Okay. I can look in there and see where those oh, backwards. Right there. So there you go. You may have to pick that control up 15, yep. 20 times to, to line it up there and to make a little bitty cut at a time and line it back up. Um, I've if taking me sometimes it's the longest is taking you know longest part of the install is making sure I got that cut because if you if you cut a little too much then <laughs> you're in trouble um, but uh, just keep going back and forth you know several times put it up there and make sure that uh, you can just make little bitty cuts a little bit of a time uh, that way you can get it pushed back through so it doesn't you don't have foam exposed when you put it on don't get a hole too big yeah and see I'm not cutting that much you can see there because uh, that'll be able to tuck in like that so I'm gonna get this should be enough. Yeah, that should work. Okay. Hook up this front power connection. Easy to hook the front connection first, and then the front will kind of rock in. It's got a little slot in the metal frame that uh, that'll kind of cover you up underneath. And then uh, once you get the front in, then you can hook the back one. It's a lot easier to get the front kind of going in first, and then you hook your the rear connection up. There we go. Sometimes you got to kind of twist and move it, bend around to get it in yep. the slot, but you'll feel it push all the way in. Then also when you look underneath it with those, those little uh, gray pegs, the little feet on the, that I was showing you just a second ago, you'll see where the hole is for those, for the from the pegs to go through. So you'll be able to look underneath and see if you're pretty close or if you're way off, how far you need to move it for that little peg to go through the hole there inside. All right, that should be good. I'm going to tip it up, Kay. get these screws on. Here like that. Get these four screws. Now these you don't want to run in real tight because oh. if you tighten it in real tight, it's just a it, it can snap right through the plastic panel. Um, so usually we'll start it with uh, with the drill. We've done so many of them, we know kind of where to stop. But a lot of times, if you want to switch this over and use a, a regular uh, just Phillips screwdriver, so you can kind of feel the tension that way you don't get it too tight and snap it. Uh, but it's really easy if you're running a drill to to tighten it right through and snap the plastic, snap right through the plastic. Well, perf perfect. That concludes the uh, to show you how to install the leather bottom cover. Um, we'll get this back in the truck again with that 15 and 11 millimeter bolt. Um, you can always check out our other install videos on our website at www.theseatshop.com. They're also all on our YouTube channel, The Seat Shop. And if you got any questions about leather replacement seat covers for your vehicle, please feel free to give us a call at 214-710-2565. Visit our website at www.theseatshop.com. Use the seat finder at the top right to select a year, make, and model to find the correct products for your vehicle. Find the product you are looking for and click learn more to see additional details about that product. Select the appropriate interior color, enter a quantity, and click add to cart to check out. 
If you have any other questions, please give us a call at 214-710-2565.